Hello my friends, welcome to the Electric Viking. Now I have some news I think is very interesting here, kind of connecting the dots. And I think it's a logical connection of dots. I don't think it's clickbait. Hang around and I'll tell you what this means. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel to get updates in your feed. Otherwise, you won't. You won't see new videos from us. You'll just see other crappy videos from cat videos, etc, etc. Anyway, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel or just throw us a like. So. I've reported on the channel many times about BYD, about where they're going, about why they are the Tesla of China or a similar company in many ways to Tesla. They're vertically integrated on why I believe you should buy BYD stock. Many people have done so since I recommended it and they've made a lot of money. Guys, kudos to you. Well done. I really applaud you for doing that, doing your research. I know you didn't just, I know you didn't just listen to me. You actually did your own research as well as listening to me. And you realize that it was a good buy and still is a good buy. In fact, right now, BYD is still chronically undervalued considering they are the only company in the world that's been able to reduce the cost per kilowatt hour of their batteries to under 100 US dollars, the only. Now, remember, that's the magical point at which EVs become either on par or below the cost to manufacture versus a petrol or diesel vehicle. So we've hit that point. Everyone thought it was going to happen in 2023, but it's happened now in 2021 and BYD has done it. Now that's the reason why BYD is able to sell EVs at a lower cost than anyone else. And I'm talking about cars here, guys, actual proper cars, not mini quadricycles or tiny cars. I'm talking about proper full-size vehicles. BYD is able to sell those at a lower price than really than anyone else. Now, if you haven't seen any videos about BYD, the company, I've made, I don't know, 20 or more of them about their history, about the vehicles they're selling, about when those vehicles are going to go on sale, about what those vehicles cost in China, about the specifications of those vehicles. I'll put links in the description below so you can learn a bit about the company. So before you make any judgments on what I'm saying, do your research first before you come to any conclusions on what you think about BYD. Now, it's been announced within the last 24 hours that BYD are joining with Tesla. Now, Tesla is going to be using BYD's battery packs. Now, I think it's highly unlikely that BYD is simply selling Tesla batteries. That seems to me as though what would, the, what would the advantage be for Tesla to use batteries only from BYD? There would be no real advantage because obviously CATL is the world's largest battery manufacturer. It's also in China. They sell similar lithium ion phosphate batteries. There's going to be no cost advantage to Tesla to use BYD's batteries. The, the price is going to be similar, if not potentially slightly more. So what is Tesla really doing here? Well, I believe the new Tesla Model 2, the hatchback, He's going to use BYD's EV platform, the entire skateboard. Sounds crazy, I know, but that's what I think is going to happen. I believe BYD will potentially subcontract out a lot of the work. Tesla will sub potentially subcontract out a lot of the work to BYD to, and they'll use the entire skateboard. Right now, Tesla is simply production constrained massively. They've got way more orders and way more demand than what they can fulfill. Think about it. They've got 1.27 million pre-orders for the Cybertruck. They're getting an average of 17,000 pre-orders per week, they're gonna have more than 2 million pre-orders for Cybertruck before it even hits the market. The same, this, they're facing similar production constraints in America, they're just increasing the prices constantly because they've got too much demand. So they need help. They need help big time, no doubt about it. Don't get me wrong, that's a good problem to have, that's a damn good problem to have. Tesla has enormous demand, more demand than what anyone is in the mainstream media particularly is recognizing or letting on or even letting you know because that doesn't sell. It doesn't sell to tell you, Tesla's doing really well, they've got lots of demand. What sells is drama, headline, negativity, negativity, clickbait, rah, rah, rah. Anyway, enormous demand. Tesla's just entered into another contract with CATL. For CATL, they're going to build a battery factory right near Tesla Shanghai, which will be able to supply Tesla with 80 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Now, that's not enough. Tesla wants, by 2025, to have over 400 gigawatt hours of battery supply. Now, how are they going to meet that? Well, they need BYD, they need everyone. They need Panasonic, which they're using as well, in obviously in America and in Japan, using CATL, now BYD. And of course, they get battery cells elsewhere as well. Several manufacturers right now are working on being able to provide Tesla with its new 4680 battery cells, in addition to Tesla manufacturing them themselves. Now, Tesla wants to have way more battery supply because it needs it than pretty much any other automaker on the planet including BYD. Yes, BYD sales are skyrocketing and they will have enormous demand, but I just don't think right now BYD 
realize the kind of demand that's going to be globally for their cars over the next five years. So that is probably the reason they're interested in doing these JVs with Toyota, Mercedes, Tesla now, and others. So I believe this new partnership will be for the entire platform, not just the batteries. But I could be wrong. Now, apparently Tesla's new electric car will cost around 25,000 US dollars. Now, how will Tesla get the price down to be low enough to make that profitable? Now, Tesla has automotive profit margins of around about 25%, very high in the industry where an average profit margin is around about 9%. So how do they maintain those profit margins on a car which costs a lot less than their other vehicles? Well, reduce prices, reduce manufacturing costs. But here is what we actually know, what's being confirmed by Tesla and BYD. Tesla is said to have entered into an agreement to buy BYD's new blade batteries in a partnership that not many people would have predicted. Well, I would have, but maybe others wouldn't because most Americans don't know anything about BYD. Most Australians don't know anything about BYD. Most people in Europe don't. I find that shocking and I find that very hard to believe, but it is true. Now, last year, BYD, which is a China-based electric vehicle and battery company, which are vertically integrated, very much like Tesla, introduced its new blade battery cell or blade battery pack. Now, the new cells use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. But the new form factor, which looks like a blade because it's very thin, is the real innovation enabling a safer cell and a higher energy density at the pack level versus previous lithium ion phosphate batteries. Now, one of the big advantages of the BYD's battery is that it's very rare for them to catch fire and difficult for them to catch fire. And they actually show you how the nail penet penetration test proves this point. Now, while undergoing nail penetration tests, the blade battery emitted neither smoke nor fire after being penetrated, and its surface temperature only reached 30 to 60 Celsius. Under the same conditions, a ternary lithium battery exceeded 500 Celsius and violently burned. And while a conventional lithium ion phosphate block battery did not openly emit flames or smoke, its surface temperature reached dangerous temperatures of 200 to 400 Celsius. This implies that EVs equipped with the blade battery are far less susceptible to catching fire even when severely damaged. So that's one of the advantages of the blade battery. Another advantage is it's a lithium ion phosphate battery. It's cheaper. Cheaper to make than lithium NCM chemistry. Much cheaper. Now, BYD also claimed that the form factor enables energy density improvements by eliminating the need for modules. So it goes directly from cell to pack. Not unlike, it's actually very similar to Tesla's structural battery pack technology. Now BYD is using new cells in its upcoming electric vehicles, but it is also said it was working with other automakers to introduce the cells in other new vehicles, including Toyota's new EVs. Now He Long, Vice President of BYD and Chairman of FinDream's battery company, commented at the launch of the new Blade cell battery last year. Today, many vehicle brands are in discussion with us about partnerships based on the technology of the Blade battery. Now, Chinese media CLS has reported that Tesla will be buying BYD's Blade batteries for deliveries in Q2 2022. So in less than a year from now, Tesla vehicles will have Blade battery cells in them. Now, BYD hasn't commented publicly on the article, but it hasn't denied the truth of what the articles have been stating in China. Now, a long time ago, Elon Musk was asked what he thought of BYD and he laughed in response. And fairly at the time, BYD's efforts in providing a, an EV to the market were well-intentioned and they were good, but the final product was nowhere near the kind of quality that it is today. So BYD have come a hell of a long way over the past decade. Remember. BYD is actually the second highest EV vehicle seller in the world this year. In the world. And they only sell right now in China and a few cars over in Europe. Almost all of their vehicles sold outside of China are buses. Buses. So we're just seeing the very beginning here of what BYD is going to do with their vehicles. There is enormous growth going to happen over the next 12 months, 24 months, 10 years for BYD. Enormous growth.
Now remember, BYD also build trucks, other utility vehicles, and of course, battery cells. And they do a number of other things. They make the chips that go in the cars. They make the software. So they're fully vertically integrated, much like Tesla. Now, Tesla has started recently using LFP chemistry in its vehicles in China. And this has enabled them to reduce the prices significantly all over the world, while well, in areas where they've wanted to anyway. In Australia, for example, prices have come down dramatically on the vehicles equipped with lithium iron phosphate battery cells. But it would be a big change for Tesla to move to the new format, the blade battery. And because it's more of a structural pack, I don't believe it makes sense to simply use the cells and not the pack. I believe it's more likely Tesla will, is planning for these new Tesla Model 2 vehicles to come equipped with this entire skateboard. That's what I think. Now remember, Tesla is right now looking at working on cell to pack technology in their new vehicles using the new 4680 battery cells. And this is exactly the same kind of methodology that BYD employ with its blade battery system, which is called 3.0. Tesla's big problem is battery constraints. So if it wants to sell a Model 2, it needs a hell of a lot more batteries than what it has now. It has a lot of batteries, but it needs a lot, lot, lot more. And maybe, just maybe, this is where Tesla is going to get those batteries from. Now, as you guys know, I've been following BYD for a long time now. And I believe it's very likely that they will become the largest car manufacturer in China and the second largest in the world. I believe Tesla will be the largest. BYD will be the second largest. And Toyota will be the Nokia of the car world and will be disrupted in a way that nobody is predicting, except for me and a few other people on YouTube. It'll be just as to see an innovative forward-thinking company like BYD and like Tesla turn a company like Toyota or Subaru into a Kodia, into a Kodak or a Nokia. Now, Toyota is doing almost everything it can to make polluting vehicles as possible before switching to EVs while at the same time funneling that money to the Sedition Caucus in Congress to help delay the switch to EVs. Right now, Toyota is releasing all kinds of ludicrous statements in the media constantly to try and prevent EVs from taking over because they simply aren't ready for that. They're simply not ready to profit from that situation. So they're trying to prevent it. Now, BYD are currently the fourth largest battery company in the world. They are very serious. They don't muck around. Now, when COVID came out, BYD mobilized their technical resources to make N95 masks, and they became the world's largest mask company in only a matter of months from nothing. Nothing to the world's largest in only a matter of months. It took advantage of an opportunity as soon as it presented itself. Now that is the type of company that BYD are. In many ways, they are the Tesla of China. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.